one of the better stories that I've heard about admitting our sins and receiving forgiveness involves a King Frederick. It happened while this 18th century Prussian king was visiting one of his prisons in Berlin. And as he talked with the inmates there, he found that each one of them claimed to be innocent of the charges against them and that they had been imprisoned improperly. So when he came to a young man who was sitting quietly by himself, he asked him, said, son, why are you here? Armed robbery, sir. And are you guilty? I am, and I deserve to be here. Immediately the king turned and ordered his guards to come and release this guilty man. I do not want him corrupting all of the innocent men. In today's gospel, Jesus is inviting us to take a closer look at our lives and determine whether or not we are guilty of some sin. And if we are, are we making matters worse by denying it? Jesus then goes on to say, I tell you, if you do not repent, you will perish. We know that Jesus is not talking about our earthly life, but about our eternal life. Jesus is instructing his followers to repent and let go of their past mistakes. Then and only then can they enjoy an eternal relationship with the Father in heaven. It was this past Christmas season that reminded us that Jesus came to earth to reopen heaven for all human beings. Do you remember how joyous we were at Christmas time, recalling how our Savior had come to redeem us? But now it is Lent. Now we are being reminded choosing heaven comes with some caveats. Heaven will not be forced upon us. We must freely choose it by staying in union with God. And for proof of this fact, we have to look no further than our first parents, Adam and Eve. They were to remain with God forever. However, their caveat was they were asked not to sin. And then once they did, they acted like that the prisoners that King Frederick was questioning, or at the very least, They were not seeking forgiveness. Adam blamed Eve and Eve blamed the snake. Neither one of them wanted to take responsibility. Jesus today is clear that choosing heaven means more than just a desire for it. It means acting upon that desire by remaining sinless or at the very least returning to God by asking for forgiveness. I tell you, if you do not repent, you will perish. This is not an idle threat. Seeking God's forgiveness shows a continuing desire to be with him. And we must retain this desire if we're ever going to make some permanent movement away from sin in our lives. Today's gospel emphasizes that our seeking forgiveness is what keeps us in a full and true relationship with our Heavenly Father. Ask and God will forgive any sin that we have committed. For he desires that we be one with him. But God also asks that nothing come between that desire to be with him. Sin cannot be more important than God. The Bible tells us that in those early years, Adam and Eve walked daily with the Lord in the garden and visited with him, I suspect, much like you and I do with our friends and family members. And don't we, when we sin against family and friends or hurt them in some way, don't we want to make up so that we can can again have a good relationship with our family and our friends? We seem to, at times, want to do anything to have that happen. God, today's gospel is reminding us that God is calling to strengthen our relationship with him by doing everything we can to join him in the hereafter. I tell you, if you do not repent, you will perish. 
The Father sent his Son to aid us on the journey to heaven, and in turn, Jesus established the church for us. And we know Jesus' church recognizes that around the age of seven, it's the age of reason where we can tell right from wrong. So then we know by the time we're 10 years old, we've had three lengths in which to consider our life. When we're 27, we've had 20 lengths. And when we're 77, we've had 70 lengths, opportunities to reunite our lives completely with our God in heaven. So each Lent, then, we are standing at a crossroads. If we are not in a right union with God, we are called to make amends and recommit our life to being one with the Father. And today's readings are simply part of that reminder. It is true that we constantly do have the opportunity to repent and be fully united with our God, but we don't always take the time to stop and think about that and act upon it, And that's what Lent is asking us to do, to act upon it. The church that Jesus Christ established knows our human nature and need for reminding so that we do not stray from that intimate relationship that we wish to have with the Father in heaven. You and I, we don't know the hour in which we are going to be called home. We could easily meet a tragic ending like those people at Siloam when the tower fell on them, or all of those people that Pilate slaughtered and mixed their blood with the sacrifices. Every day, we are reminded of how tentative our lives are, just like Jesus was reminding them. Every day, we hear about plane crashes, tornadoes and floods that end lives, suicide bombers and modern tyrants who cause many to have untimely deaths. Whenever someone suffers an untimely death, we sometimes wonder if they had time to repent and fully reunite their their life with God. This is why the church wisely sets aside times during the year for us to consider what direction our life is taking. In Advent, we were called to ask ourselves, are we still excited and living out our life knowing that God came in human form to redeem us? Answering positively means that we are still showing that kind of gratefulness by daily giving Christmas love to our family and to our friends and to the strangers that we meet. In Lent, we are asked to consider whether we are still watering and fertilizing our spiritual life feeding it in order to avoid sin and sinful situations. During Lent, we are reminded that one of the best ways to take stock and answer that question is to again ask if there are sins that separate us from that right relationship with God. And if the answer is yes, we are being encouraged to make a formal confession to our God through the sacrament of reconciliation. Lent is our reminder that we can cultivate a healthier lifestyle by being honest like that young Prussian prisoner was, being honest about our life and admitting to our king any mistakes that we have made and asking for forgiveness and the grace to sin no more. And we do this through the sacrament of confession. And in recent years, the bishops have chosen to set aside one church in each one of the dioceses to be open 24 hours, to have their confessional open for 24 hours. And we again here at St. John's have chosen to have a confessional open for 24 hours so that no matter what time of the day, it will not be inconvenient for us to seek the sacrament of reconciliation. This coming Friday, beginning at 5 o'clock, we will have Stations of the Cross, and that will be the beginning of the hosting of our 24 hours of adoration and confession. And I just encourage you, as a part of your Lenten plan, to consider setting aside an hour or more to come and be with the Lord, to seek forgiveness where needed, and the graces to avoid further sins, and to believe the words of our Savior. I tell you, unless you repent, you will perish. 